Hello everyone, welcome back. So for this final video uh, this week, um, we're going to get just a little bit of extra practice working with variables. And uh, we're also going to introduce a different concept for motion uh, around the idea of uh, something called easing. Okay? Uh, that's a very useful one that I still uh, rely on in, in many projects, actually, uh, just to create some quick um, sort of smooth animations. And it's a kind of a different perspective on motion than we've looked at in the previous uh, video. So in a previous video, we thought of motion as, you know, we have a variable for a coordinate and then we have a speed. And the way objects move is we add this kind of constant speed to a position and that allows us to create motion. And that's helpful, uh, especially in the game context. But sometimes um, there's kind of another way that we can look at motion. Uh, we're still going to have coordinates, like variables that represent position. Uh, but instead, we're going to have the concept of like a target or somewhere we know we want to be, somewhere we want to go. And we are going to animate towards that target over time uh, to create the motion or the animation. And we're applying this to position in these examples, but uh, these concepts could, could apply to anything, right? We can animate sizes of things, colors, right? Color values. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily apply to just position. Remember, it's programs are just numbers. So uh, we can animate anything that's a number in a program. We can apply the same concepts to. So uh, I've already gone ahead here and written a little bit of a program. Um, this is kind of similar to what we've done uh, earlier this week and uh, just to save some time. So we have two variables, two global variables, x and diameter. Uh, x is 0, diameter is 200. And then I'm simply using these variables to draw a circle over here. Okay? So rather than get x to simply just move forward and incre increase over time, kind of forge on using the speed, uh, we're going to think about just getting it to follow the mouse cursor. Okay? And uh, we're going to use that to introduce the concept of easing. <clears throat> so the simplest way we could do this, uh, if we you know, wanted to, our circle to follow the mouse cursor, let's worry about the x-axis first. Uh, we could do something like that. We're going to say x equals mouse x. Okay? And just to bear with me for a second here. Uh, this seems kind of pointless, and it is, but we're going to go somewhere with this. So now uh, the circle is following my mouse along the x-axis because in every frame that of draw, uh, I'm making uh, x equals to mouse x. And note that it doesn't matter if I do this before or after uh, drawing the circle because x is a global variable, which means it's persistent. It always exists. So whether or not I update x after I draw the circle or before doesn't matter because the code is always going to come right back into draw. It's going to repeat over and over, right? So it's sort of um, doesn't make a big difference. Okay, so we could draw the circle, then update its position, um, or vice versa. In this case, it doesn't have much of an impact. Okay. So uh, we're following the mouse uh, position here. Okay. Now, another way that we could phrase the same thing, uh, and you know, of course, we could just put mouse x in here if that's all we wanted to do. But we want to create a, maybe a more interesting fluid animation here. So we're going to rely on this variable and not just use mouse x directly. So another way to look at this is that in between each frame, right, um, if we wanted the, the, the circle to follow the mouse, right, rather than make it equal to mouse x, okay, we could say, all right, well, in the duration of a frame, if I move my cursor really, really fast, right, there might be more than one pixel in between these. So we could look at the difference between where my circle is, where the mouse is, right, measure that difference, and then add the difference to the position so that the two line up, the two match. Okay. So instead of writing that, we could say, let's um, <clears throat> let's calculate the difference. Okay, so the difference is going to be mouse x minus x. So this is where mouse x is, this is where my circle is, and there may be a difference between them okay, if I've moved my mouse in between frames. <clears throat> and then if we want to get x to catch up to the mouse, we are going to add the difference to x. Okay? And that still works. Okay? So you may ask, well, why do, why do this? This seems like a much more convoluted way of simply making x equal to mouse x. And you would be correct, except that now we have this new variable we've created called difference that we can manipulate. If we want to introduce maybe a more interesting animation, and this is where the easing idea comes in, maybe uh, we want this circle to smoothly 
uh, sort of approach kind of slow down as we get closer to the mouse circle to make it look a little bit more lively and dynamic. Now we can do that by manipulating how much of the difference we're going to add to X in every frame. <clears throat> For example, if we take this difference and rather than moving all the way towards the mouse cursor, right? So kind of think of it as if the mouse cursor moved away in a frame, we calculate the difference here and then we basically teleport X to be right on top by adding the full difference right on top of it. If instead we took a fraction of the difference, right, we're going to divide it, we're going to cut it by a certain amount, and then we're going to move towards our goal by that amount. If we do this over and over, we're going to keep getting closer, but we're never going to quite get there. Right? So instead of the difference here, we could say take the difference divided by 10. <clears throat> and now we get this cool behavior. And that's the easing part. So as I move my cursor, now the circle is following, but it's got a bit of a lag to it because now we're taking, okay, first we check the difference, how far away the two are, but then instead of going all the way there by just saying X plus equal difference, now we're taking 10% or divided by 10, just a fraction of the difference, and we're moving that much closer to our goal. So the bigger the difference, the faster we're going. And as we get closer, that fraction is getting smaller and smaller. And eventually, in fact, we're not going to ever quite get there, but that number is going to get so close that it's going to be less than a pixel and it's not going to visually make any difference. Uh, even though if we were to log <clears throat> X, uh, we will see that uh, it's going to <clears throat> be a decimal number, right? That's going to get very close to wherever the mouse is, but never just quite okay so it's still going to be um it's getting very very close and eventually we get so close that it, it gets you know beyond the number of decimal places we have uh, access to in our variable and it doesn't really matter <clears throat> so uh, that's a really useful uh, concept to play with also for creating animations um, so we can divide here one I prefer personally. So the, dividing by 10, by the way, is the same thing as, um, as multiplying by 0 0.1. Okay? So you can either divide by 10 here, or here I could say multiply by 0 0.1. I prefer this, this version, this approach. Uh, to me, this is more logical uh, because now I kind of think of it as percentages, right? So this is taking 0 0.1, right? Or 0 0.10. This is, um, this is taking 10% of the difference every time in every frame and then moving by that much. Um, or we could say, you know, 20% and then this would go faster. Or we could say 5%, right, 0 0.05, and now it goes slower. Okay, it just slows down the behavior. So to me, this is a little bit easier to tweak rather than thinking of it in terms of a division. Uh, I prefer to multiply by... Uh, floating point number, a decimal number, but it's the same difference. Okay. It's, it works out to the same thing in the end. Um, so uh, just, you know, convince yourself that multiplying something by 0 0.1 is the same as dividing by 10. Okay. If you have the number 100 times 0 0.1 equals 10, 10 divided by 10 equals 10 also. So I prefer this approach, and uh, whenever you see other people's programs, uh, this is going to be also the more common way of approaching it. Okay? <clears throat> so this difference here, uh, just multiplying by a small number, uh, I prefer to do it that way. Uh, we could take that idea also now, and we could we could um, apply it to the y-axis as well. Okay, so if we wanted to do the same thing along the y-axis, we might say let let's create a variable for y. And uh, here we're going to have to calculate two differences. Uh, first, we're going to put y here in our um, circle code so that it's going to use the value of y and x. And then we'll need to calculate two differences, one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis. Um, so let's rename this. Um, just for short, we're going to say, let's call it dx, okay? just because uh, it's shorter. And then we're going to do the same for dy, mouse y minus y. And then take the y coordinate and multiply and then add to it a fraction of the difference. Right? And now we have a, a circle that's following our cursor in two dimension, uh, but adding this kind of easing behavior. Okay? 
Um, there's lots of other equations you could apply to this difference uh, if you wanted to uh, get different behaviors. Um, but the easing, the fraction one is the simplest. Um, and uh, yeah, it's also kind of satisfying. Um, and you could use that concept to animate against all kinds of things, right? When you know where an object is or a value is and you know where you want it to end up, um, you could use it to animate you know, the, the gray value of the circle, for example the size to kind of transition from one size to another, but smoothly over time, you could use that concept as well. Finally, um, before we wrap up, just the final improvement we could do to this program. Again, um, this is my easing factor is the same along both axes, right? So if I wanted to make my life easier down the road, I would probably do something like this. I would make that into a variable, right? 0 0.1. And then um, instead of Point one here, I would put easing, easing. Remember, I just made that name up, right? Variable names, they're up to us. We just, as long as we don't step on toes, we don't use defined names in the language. Um, here, this is gonna be the amount of easing, so I'm calling it easing. And now I have one place where I can um, just experiment with and then try, you know, try different values. So when I tweak that number, it just makes my animation more or less, um, you know, responsive. So if I put a really small number, it takes a while for the circle to catch up uh, because again, every in every frame, I'm measuring how far is the circle away from its destination. And then I'm only moving by a fraction of that distance. So another way to look at motion and a, a really cool trick to have in your bag of tricks for creating interesting, um, quick little animations in your programs. <clears throat> so with that, um, this is going to be our last uh, tutorial for this week. Um, we'll leave it at that. And uh, yeah, have fun with this week's code exercise. I will see you in um, the uh, next video next week. Take care.